The owner of the AlphaSpot 700 was very pleased and asked me to repair his 2 Das Avant 180 A subwoofer amplifier plate. Guess I got a new customer now. Both share the same issue, they would trip the breaker when plugged in. I checked the fuse and it was completely obliterated. Ooh, it smell... it smell bad. I cleaned up the glass pieces and tried with the fresh fuse, but with no more success. It's completely shorted, and it's safe to say that it needs some maintenance. Here is how it works. When it comes in here, there is a fuse and then straight to the board here. So this is the board that contains here the power supply, inverters, probably some signal processing here, and the output stage here. It comes out, out of this plug to the speaker. Here is the input-output board. I don't think there is an issue in here. So let's focus on that. The problem with this kind of board topology is that I can't disconnect the power supply to the output stage. So I can't test uh, if it's rather a power supply issue or another problem. First of all, before trying anything, I want to clean up every board. That way it's, it makes it much easier to follow the trace because black on black is not very, very easy to spot. interesting. The thing has been taken apart quite a lot of time because out of 8 screws only 4 were installed and in the 4 there was this one which is cut in half. <laughs> yeah, this one is broken. This ground terminal is now soldered for some reason and on this one there is even less screw, only one single screw for this one, like, come on. Yeah, and this one has melt point here, probably someone was soldering something nearby and... <laughs> I simply use soapy water to clean the board because there are no backup battery and the caps are completely drained. Unlike some people might think, in most cases water is safe for electronic as long as it's well dried, else it can introduce some rust. Yeah, now it's just much better. Now let's try to figure out what's wrong. Uh, let's first of all start with the most common failure, so the output transistors. For now I'm just looking for some shorts. Nothing, 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 right. Output transistors are not shorted, I don't know yet if they are fine, but at least they are not shorted. So now I want to check the power supply parts, so let's first of all start with the full bridge rectifier here. No shorts on the inputs. Oh. And a short on the output. Did the same here. Nothing. And shorted. Yeah, but this is not good. Normally, uh, 
working one should be open socket. Nothing. Yeah, so this is a good one, and these these are shorted somewhere. Maybe they are the fault. Or maybe the fault is just after, and the terminal are shorted together. Here it is out. Let's try it out. Ah, no short. <laughs> and on the board, yeah, we still have the short. So this is good. Next things that could go wrong is the are the caps here. I'm pretty sure these are good, but let's try them anyway. All right, we should see a short and then a voltage rising. Yeah, that is because we are uh, charging the caps with the voltage of the resistance meter and it's charging. Yeah, so caps are good. Good and good. All right. And next, um, so this is um, what we called a switching power supply. So that means that we have a switching mode transformer, which is basically a standard transformer, but that is switched at very high frequency. So to generate this high frequency, we use so-called transistor. In this application, they are using RGBT, so these are those two. So here it is, it's a bipolar IGBT, it's made for high voltage, here, you can see. Shorted. And shorted. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> it's just a big blob of solder inside. <laughs> <laughs> it's shorted everywhere, wow! And these are the driving transistors that are used to amplify the signal from the control chip or the control unit which might be one of this board or this component, I'm not sure. To then go to the gate of the IGBT transistor. Alright, I'm fine. Amazingly, they seem to have survived the short circuit in here. This is incredible. At least they are not shorted. Maybe they are open circuit and I don't really know. This is the autocoupler to feed back the signal from the output into the power supply the module here, which is very simple for the um, switching of those two IGBTs. We have also two optocoupers here, but these are for the signal to mitigate the clip, for the clip signal feedback. And there are two optocoupers under the grey cap. So here on the power that comes out, we have a minus 20 plus 20, which goes to those regulator here. It's just a 5 volt regulator, so we have 5, uh, 50, 12 and minus 12. And the more I'm looking at it, and the more I find some weird stuff, like... These caps are missing, this pad is missing, this solder looks rather suspicious. And also this has a dent, a solder dent here, this is dent too. Yeah. This thing is a whole mess. 
but anyway those caps are not really necessary they are just here to make sure the signal is stable for the regulator but I think I have uh, figured out how the current is uh, given to the power output so there is here the rail the plus ground and minus here and these are connected to those uh, four diodes here so I think if I just remove those diodes I can uh, eliminate all of the power amplifier section that would be better for testing so let's do that So to test a diode, you need to check on both sides and normally on one side you should have an uh, open socket and on the other side you should have a voltage drop or in this case I should have a high value resistance. So here I have an overload. Now switching on the other side. And now I have a resistance. That's a good one. Alright, now we are isolated. I can now replace the two LGBTs with some uh, new one here. This is it. Now we have no short, and uh, hopefully, this will work. Hopefully. So now let's connect some power. So I've got some cable here and a light bulb in series. This is, of course, not an LED one. This is and how gen 1 are connected and normally the light bulb should light up briefly and then shut off or light up just a little bit after if it stay on that means that we are short still in the unit and that's not good but alright so let's go powering in 3, 2, 1 hey look at that you have an LED Let's cut the power because these are going to get warm. No, that's it. That's not uh, too bad. No, all right. So this is good. This is very good. This is very promising. All right, and now let's try it with a simple cable with no bulb whatsoever, so that uh, there is no limit of current. One, two, three, let's go. No problem. That's cool. I'm watching it operating. There is still this little LED, but no explosion, no no kaboom. You remember here, I'm without a fuse, so if something blows, it's my house that's just power off. And uh, it's midnight and in the middle of the night and it's dark outside, so <laughs> Let's make some measurements. Uh, hmm, quite afraid. Uh, and you see DC twenty volt, twenty two volt even. Minus 22, alright. The next thing to do is to put this little diode here back and hopefully if there is no problem in the outputs and amplifying section, well, 
I guess this one is good to go. Let's pour it off. Wait for the caps. It blinks. That's funny. That's good. So let's have a look at the power here. Let's go in DC. I'm quite afraid. Eighty three. Minus 83. All right, that's good. So we have all of the power supply rails. That's very nice. So um, yeah, now let's put all, everything back together, and uh, hopefully we have signal and sound coming out. Is that really the end of this one? <laughs> so we managed to repair the power supply by replacing the two IGBTs in here. The thing is, as I said in the video, there are some missing components and some uh, things that I want to tackle is that normally this kind of scenario shouldn't happen as we have a lot of filtering caps and those coil in here. But since it has happened, I think uh, those, one of those components have a problem. So here is all of the components I'm going to replace. So most of the filtering caps and also the big thermistor in here that's normally used to regulate the current spark when you power on the unit. I'm also going to replace the power plug in here and probably also the fuse holder as they can be damaged and also I could hear a very bad contact and on the plug here but just to be safe I'm going to replace it. This can lead also to a broken power supply as a lot of current spikes when uh, bad contact happen can lead again to this kind of scenario. But I can't do that right now because I need the approbation of the customer of course but since he's in holidays and with the shipping time it's going to be quite a long time. I want to share this video and there will be a second episode following this one where we're going to replace all of those and maybe we will find some other stuff because I couldn't test the board in circuit with a speaker with sound because with all of this missing components with no filtering at all that can be very dangerous for the board. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.